Alright, so I saw the My Little Pony movie, and I've had a night to rest up, gather my thoughts. Just gonna give them to you here, quick and unfiltered, so... Okay, here we go. Uh, I saw ahead of time that this movie was getting kind of mixed reception. It has like a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I did think that was kind of a shame. I did kind of want this movie to uh, go out and prove uh, yeah, why a lot of people like this franchise so much, show uh, what could be really good about it, and uh, yeah, especially since this was kind of its chance to push itself out to the mainstream a little more, and I mean, of course, not everybody is going to embrace My Little Pony, anything called My Little Pony, that's just a foregone conclusion, but, okay, still thought it was kind of a shame, but, uh, yeah, as far as what I, uh, thought I was gonna think, um, I mean, I did, uh, watch a couple people's vlogs on the movie, uh, did see a couple reactions around the rift and such, and for the most part, fans have been saying that, yeah, you know what, that was okay, I mean, it was flawed, it wasn't perfect, but I'm glad I saw that. That is worth your time. But, um, and I mean, some people have also been saying that, yeah, it's great, I loved it, uh, go out and see it right now, that, but there are a lot of bronies who just always say that, no matter what's on when it comes to this franchise, so, um, yeah, but, um, alright, but, um, even though, yeah, it seemed like, for the most part, to be, like, uh, the reactions were a good sign, I also saw Brad Jones' Um, his Midnight Screenings episode on it with one of his friends, not one I recognized, I don't think he's a regular, but yeah, they hated it. They said it was like nails on a chalkboard, that it was all sorts of stuff, like sugar water, like being hit over the head with a bag of sugar, like a little girl jumping on her bed for hours, and, uh, and what's more, the guy he was with, um, he said that he had seen a couple episodes of the show, he was familiar with Lauren Faust, he liked... Powerpuff Girls and stuff, and he thought the episodes he saw were charming. He said there was none of that in the movie, so okay, that was a little bit of a red flag for me, but, um, alright, even so, I, when, I mean, I figured that it helps a little if you're a fan, probably helps if you're a fan familiar with the franchise and such, so, okay, go in there, credits starts, they're having a lot of fun playing up the animation, making it look like, uh, more settling into some big screen treatment for these ponies, and then they open with They Got the Beat, that song from, I think it's from the 80s, it's not an 80s song, I've listened to a ton, but, um, I mean, I know it, but, okay, so, they start with that, they reward it to be about ponies, and yeah, right from the start, I was kind of aware of what people who aren't familiar with the franchise would think, because, I mean, to me, that's just one of the their many offhand attempts to, uh, kind of have some fun with this premise, to have some offbeat fun, do something a little different, uh, have, explore the creative possibilities, and a middle of the road one at that, because, okay, there's not like a dance sequence accompanying it or something, it doesn't have anything to do with much of anything that's happening, it's just the song they picked out, but yeah, to people not familiar with the franchise, that's probably gonna seem like classic studio pandering, just throw something colorful and loud at the screen and hope it, uh, gets kids to see it as a must-buy product, so, um, okay, and there are kind of a lot of moments like that, that, um, d yeah, stuff that, uh, I was aware might, like, it plays passably to me, like, nothing was great, it seemed like it was going in there pretty eager to please, a little too eager to please, but, yeah, a lot of stuff, I could see how people would be turned off to it, and so, in fact, some stuff, um, what, like, um, the first, um, the song, one of the opening songs where Spike just, like, randomly eats a gem, I mean, I could see how, I mean, we know that he does that because we see the show, but, uh, yeah, they don't, like, explain that or anything, so, okay, I could see that just coming across, like, throwing a lot of dumb stuff at the screen, like, hey, the dragon wants to eat a gem, isn't that something, but, um, alright, but, yeah, even without that, though, the first act was going in there real eager to please, and I honestly saw exactly what Brad Jones and his friend were talking about there. Like, I mean, this, um, it, um, uh, where to start? I mean, the, uh, heck, there, there is no, there's almost no particular thing I could single out because it's just everything. Like, um, yeah, Pinky tackles Twilight and does a, uh, lukewarm... Uh, rendition of her gag from Philly Vanilli, where she's like, look at me, Twilight, this is the single 
a defining moment of your life that you will be judged by. So don't worry about it. And then they go into a song from there about how uh, she's got this, she shouldn't worry about it, which, okay, comes across like the most slapdash thing. It comes across like they just dropped it in there haphazardly, just throw something else at the screen. Random song about how she's got this. No setup. Does not go at all with the moment that happened right before it. Just, hey, let's have a song. And uh, then from there, as, yeah, they f and, okay, if I didn't mention, she, they're singing about um, why she's, uh, shouldn't, the thing she's all worried about setting up is another random festival that she apparently thought of, a friendship festival, because friendship is literally everything in this show, but, um, okay, so, and she's invited a big-name pop star to it, which they mention, the second they finish the song, the pop star pony shows up, no transition, no setup, just, hey, let's do that now, uh, so yeah, the pop star pony played by Sia, and they do, so yeah, let's do the whole thing with, uh, Twilight being worried about impressing her, because she happened to show up right as Pinkie Pie drops a cake on Twilight, and, yeah, they do the thing you saw in the trailer with the, oh, buttercream, go for cleanup, copy, but, um, okay, and then from that, again, no transition, no setup, just random dark clouds, hey, bad guys, like, all right, they drop in and do the thing you saw from the trailer with that Stitch villain who's awful, by the way. He has no place in this movie. I don't know why he looks like a Stitch villain. I don't know why he's there at all. He's not funny. Uh, he even announces it. Okay, we're here on behalf of the Storm King, and now to make this evil, evil message, his re I call it an evil, evil message. This is the amount of tact here. His messenger, Tempest Shadow, I think it was, and so yeah. She comes out, Emily Blunt's character, uh, starts, yeah, okay, we demand your immediate surrender, um, the three princesses, the four princesses are front and center, and Luna says, why should we be scared of you, because she's awesome, but then, like, without even bothering to explain, like, they skipped a line or something, Tempest just says, yeah, I was hoping you'd pick the hard way, fight breaks out, the fight, uh, is a huge disappointment because it's one of those fights where the bad guys just have a whatever you do doesn't matter device. They have a, in this case, a magic ball that you throw it at uh, whoever you're after and magic doesn't affect it and it just encases them in crystal. Like it, you're, they can't do anything to fight it because of course they can't. Cadence holds it back for like two seconds with her magic and then it uh, forces its way through and encases her in this black crystal and Right away, Celestia's like, oh, we're cooked, we've got, we need help, and she starts um, yelling at Luna to go get help from the Queen of the Hippo. She's frozen in crystal, Luna shoves her way past a couple of guards, and then she's frozen in crystal, and yeah, it's one of those fights that just really, like, I think uh, people make, uh, writers make this mistake a lot when building up the villains, when it's been established that, like, the heroes have enough strength so that it matters, but yeah, and the way they build up the villains is just having them curb stomp for any reason, just basically be, have the power to negate whatever the heroes do, and the, yeah, that doesn't come across as intimidating, that comes across like you're being lazy, like they just wrote, like the writers just wrote down, then the bad guys win, like, that's, like, dull, that, um, seems obligatory, it seems like whoever's winning is just dictated by the needs of the story. Okay, the way you do that, you have to show that, okay, the um, good guy's strength, you have to show, like, what they can do with it, how it is relevant, how it does, like, how it is very strong, and then show how what the bad guys do is even stronger, just completely takes it on, beats it back, etc. And, um, but okay, then Twilight and the gang, they get knocked off a bridge because... Even the guards are too much for Princess Twilight. She shoots a beam at them. They bounce it back at her off their shield and bridge breaks. They go washing away in the river below. And, okay, so I thought to myself, <laughs> okay, in an hour and a half, I'm going to be sitting in front of my camera saying, like, okay, it was a little, wound a little tight starting out. It was a little eager to please, but, okay, then it... It got all the introduction stuff out of the way, so then it calmed down and uh, settled in and started doing what it can do. And it wasn't perfect, but it was alright. And at first, it seemed like it might. Um, that might be the case. They um, start their quest to find the 
queen of the hippo. And they, uh, yeah, they wind up in a desert town. They run into Tay Diggs' character. And he's really good in this movie, I will say. Like, the, he, his character is, um, just what he looks like, uh, from the animation. The, a caught an artist with, um, who's more of an anti-hero. But, uh, yeah, they, um... I kind of liked what they were doing with him, although they crowbar in another song spoiler. Almost all of the songs in this movie, and it's not a spoiler at all, what am I saying? All the songs in this movie are lame. They're just, like, crowbarred in there. They have, they're they there to take the place of actual conversation. They're, there's no setup to them. They feel like needlessly reiterating what we already know, or um, repeating what, like, being the excuse to go from one point to the next when one line would have done just as well, and in fact, when writing actual dialogue probably would have been better, but, um, okay, so, uh, I was kind of annoyed that they dropped another one in there, but, okay, they go with Tay Diggs, and, uh, that, I kind of liked what they were doing with him, uh, the villain, who, I will say, Tempest, this villain, she, I agree with everyone else that she is the best new character, um, yeah, really, Emily Blunt does a great job making her just this ice blood, uh, intimidating, really, yeah, cool as a cucumber villain, and, um, and she, too, she has, like, a broken horn, which, uh, yeah, we see right away what she does with that. She sort of, like, shoots out, like, unfocused magic almost, just, like, pure lightning energy, which, that's pretty cool, but, um, alright, so, she's hot on their tail, um, and... She actually runs into Tay Diggs' character, and I liked what they were doing with that, so I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm getting into this. It was still, um, really, like, it ha it wasn't, um, yeah, full, like, fully working. I mean, it was still really fast, really sl well, fairly fast-paced, fairly, um, somewhat slapdash, I'll say, you know, it, uh, it was, it seemed like they, like, a, there was that song in there still, for example, and just... Stuff like that, but uh, not the show's A-grade writing, but still enough so that I was starting to get into it. And then it's right back into the slapdash storytelling. They run into more characters you've seen in the trailer, and uh, at first, um, they are prepared. They don't like the main six, and then... I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. And then they um, are... Um, they Basically, everybody has a minute where... Um, they need to step back and just sit down for a minute because reasons, the <laughs> bad reasons, but anyway, they, they get a chance to talk it out with these characters who reveal that they are also forced to work for this Storm King even though they don't like it, and uh, then, what do you do? You sing them a song and totally change their mind. And not a song, even though, not a song about uh, how this is an opportunity for them to switch sides, work against the Storm King, help someone who can bring them down. No, 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 it's not about good reasons that, like, this is your chance, just about, hey, you don't want to do this thing. It's a Rainbow Dash song, and it seemed like they stopped thinking about the lyrics that, what the, yeah, how, um, what would give meaning to these lyrics beyond the fact that they include the word awesome, and mm, you sing, like, Sing a little song, and I mean, I totally get why he, um, like, Brad Jones, I mean, he didn't say anything specific, he said it's like sugar water, girl jumping up and down on her bed, uh, hit over the head with a bag of sugar, but I mean, you know, even, that, that doesn't really speak to anything specific, but somehow that's the mood you get from this, it feels like he doesn't care, it feels like it's just trying to eat through stuff as fast as possible, and I mean... Oy, like, some people have said the pacing is the weakest part of this movie. The pacing is terrible. This is real, like, this is some of the worst pacing I've seen in an animated story in a long time. And, uh, oi. So, yeah, they sing a song about, like, hey, you've got a choice to make, and if you choose the good side, you'll be awesome, and... That's it. They're totally on the main six's side from now on, for now and all time. And the main six do nothing to help them. Uh, yeah, um, do nothing to make to give them this chance to, um, yeah, push back against whatever they were afraid of. Um, Tempest 
finds them right away. It turns out every bit as bad as you think, as they seem to think it would. The main six do nothing to change it. They don't even like apologize for the fact that that's how it worked out. These characters are still on the main six's side after this happens for I don't know why. So okay, I stepped out to the bathroom at about this part, and okay, I thought to myself, when I go back in there. This movie and I are going to start over from square one. I'm just going to take a deep breath, let past be the past, because, I mean, it's still doing some cool stuff with this villain. That's, like, one of the last things I saw before I stepped out. And, uh, yeah, you know, okay, it's it's probably got some more, more different stuff it wants to try. We're just going there with a, yeah, clean slate. And so I went in there, sat back down. Uh, they were... Just starting off the part where they meet more characters you've seen in the trailer. Um, the underwater ones was actually kind of a twist with them, but yeah, sat back down, started watching that. There was like. Like. Eh, the, this, like, this is about what did it for me. Um, there's a breakup moment in this movie between Twilight and the main six, because, okay, they wanted one solution to a problem, Twilight wanted another one, uh, I don't know if I'm okay with Twilight, uh, with the movie deciding that Twilight going off trying her own solution is something she would do, not because it didn't make sense, because, okay, if, um, if it was clear that, like, um, nothing else was going to work. Yeah, Twilight would have had to try this. That would have been, for all intents and purposes, the right thing to do. I don't know if I can say it was, like, a Twilight smart decision. Uh, it doesn't, it, if it's supposed to be a bad decision, it doesn't really speak to anything, that, any flaws in her character or anything. It just the movie decided she would do that. The breakup over it is the stupidest thing. Like, the main six, they start making all kinds of accusations like, Oh, you didn't trust us to handle it our way. You lied to us. No, she didn't. No, she uh, did not say that she didn't trust you. No, she did not show a lack of trust. Um, she didn't even say that, like, you guys talked about what the rest of the main six were going to go try. They didn't even say it was a solution. They just said it was something nice to do. The fact that it became a solution is stupid, stupid, stupid. It's worse than... Um, like, how they, um, uh, solved the problem with, uh, the characters from the trailer I was talking about before, again, trying to avoid spoilers, but I mean, at least there was a reason that those characters would switch sides, even though the main six didn't say it. Here, the main, like, the main six, their solution, they provide a reason. That's not a reason that, uh, yeah, the characters in question should do what they want, and... Uh, just the and then Twilight snaps out at them and they're like, "We can't talk to you right now." And it, I mean, I'm okay with cliches if they're like you. I mean, because a cliche is just in the end, um, a structure, an optional, um, the the option of a certain structure of storytelling. Even if it's been done a hundred times, you can fill them in with, um. You can breathe life into them. You can um, show how yeah, it speaks to something about the particular characters you're exploring. That's not what this is. It is totally just through the motions of something we've seen a hundred thousand times. We all know what's going to happen. Like, yeah, the bad guys are going to come back. That's going to turn really bad. And they're going to, yeah, do a 180. Like, oh my gosh, we've got to save Twilight. And it... So, okay, just... Like, and I mean, yeah, it was already being rocky leading up to that. I was like, no, mm -hmm, just hold on. It's going to, like, give it a chance, like you said. And crash. I'm like, all right, I got to stop making excuses for this movie. And, okay, and ironically, shortly after that, even though the bad guys coming back in and getting just what they want, because of course they do, I mean, that was kind of face palm. But, okay, after that, the movie actually gets to the point where I was just sort of indifferent. Like, I... Still can't say what it was doing was particularly well done, but I mean, it got, it rose to just like, yeah, passably eh, okay after that. Like, there's probably the only good song in the movie, the villain song, which, um, 
yeah, it gives us the backstory of this Tempest character, and I mean, it's, um, it's not as deep as the movie seems to want Tempest to be, like, we, there are a couple lines from her, like, looking at the princess's frozen in crystal and saying, such a waste, all that power wasted on parties, like, okay, so hinting at some ambition, a thought process there, it ends up being just sort of like, okay, something happened to her when she was younger, and she decided she was better off on her own, and it's better than Starlight Glimmer's story, because, in spite of the people who said, well, no, Starlight Glimmer's story is something small caused something big. Isn't that always profound? Every cliche story it's been in, but I mean, like, it's not a non-reason to go bad that, like, several hundred thousands of people deal with in real life and don't turn out to be yeah, psychopaths because of it. Because of it. it, it not only is something bad that happened to her, but we see how it started her off on a new path. So, okay, fine. And um, there's yeah, some the big climactic turn of events. How um, the main six make their comeback, and how um, like Twilight messing things up. How I mean, it still messed things up, but the main six them getting somewhere before that happened. There's still a consolation prize for it. So okay, that's kind of smart, and uh, they make their plan to um, have their comeback. And the part of it that's an actual plan doesn't actually amount to much, but um, still, I mean, it's um, it's one of the more entertaining things in the movie. It leads to one of the few funny Pinkie Pie moments here, like for the most part. Pinkie Pie is kind of an unfunny load in this movie, but uh, she has her moments, and one of them is in this uh, climax, and okay, and meanwhile we uh, get the grand entrance of the Storm King, who is really only there so that um, Tempest, because we see she's a conflicted character, and um, okay, the only reason he's there is that so the victory of the ponies, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that they win in the end, but yeah, the victory of the ponies um, does not hinge on her conflictions, that the Storm King is still the one they have to take down, and um, okay, or that they have to take down without any conflictions leaving an opening there, so um, alright, there's uh, they start to sort of build like a kind of a relationship between Twilight and Tempest, like uh, enemies who um, like Tempest sings that villain song to her and, like, there's almost, like, there's a twisted sympathy for Twilight there, just like, um, come on, little one, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee, so, okay, that's alright, the climax is fine, I mean, you know, pretty much everything has a payoff, the Storm King, I mean, he's not funny, and he's really trying to, he's, like, supposed to be one of those big bads who looks intimidating, but undercuts everything that's happening with, um, just, yeah, jokes and quips and whatever. He's not funny, though, so whatever, but, um, okay, we, um, yeah, we have our climax, we end with, um, Sia's song, which is, a, it's not actually, like, a power pop, um, yeah, rock out to the clo to the end song, like, uh, what, um, Canterlot Wedding or, uh, um, Twilight's Kingdom, how those ended with songs like that. It's more of a, just, yeah, see us out the door kind of a song. Um, just, yeah, uh, reflect on everything that's happened. And honestly, I couldn't understand what she was saying through half of it. But, I mean, it's okay. It's not, I mean, it's better than the half a dozen lame songs that were, that probably more than that, that were shoved in everywhere in this movie. And, uh, so, yeah, that... I guess they got the beat, because that's just they got the beat, and the villain song are the only songs that at least don't suck, but, um, okay, and then, towards the end of that, we get probably the best moment in the movie, where, um, just this moment between Twilight and this one other character that's actually just, like, a slow, delicate little moment that, I'll be darned, really works. I'm like, where were these the whole time? I mean, I, I guess that's what they were going for with the, uh, the breakup scene, and, but that was just face palmingly stupid, so no, but, well, this moment really works, like, too little too late, but, um, okay, so, and then, yeah, credits, we get a bunch of pictures play, playing us out, um, hinting at, some of them hinting at what happens, uh, after this, some just pictures, like, Starlight Glimmers in one of them, so I guess this at very least is after season five, but, um, okay, yeah, I, 
I mean, I'll probably end up seeing it again someday for some random reason, and I'll probably, um, be less annoyed with it, because that's always how it works when you watch something the second time. The, uh, the impact it was supposed to have is no longer the impact it has, because you know what's coming, so the stuff that was painful just is, eh, okay. I can't ever imagine in good conscience calling this a good movie, giving this a thumbs up, and I mean, and don't tell me that I get off on being negative, because heck, I barely ever give negative reviews. I give a lot of lukewarm reviews, I give a lot of just like mildly positive reviews. I don't give very many negative reviews. I'm the guy who said that the first Equestria Girls was worth seeing, but not great. I was, I mean, I was very lukewarm about it, but I came out of that saying like, you know what, something was accomplished there. That, uh, had stuff that four fans made it worth seeing, or at least I'm not unhappy I saw that. Tentative thumbs up, and I mean, I didn't say that about the last Equestria Girls movie, because that, oi, that might be even worse than this one, but no. I don't give a lot of negative reviews. This is a negative review. This movie botched it. This is way too overamped, way too over eager to please. I mean, people are lashing out against the, um, Rotten Tomatoes score, like the old, oh, um, critics shouldn't count because they didn't agree with me, even though some of them technically did, but it's not the majority, so it's worthless. The, their opinion, only my opinion is worth something. Honestly, I'm surprised this movie is even still above 50%. I don't think that would be the case if it had more than the 30-some reviews it has now, which is really small for a wide, that's a really small amount for a wide-release movie, but, um, oi. I mean, we. I mean, honestly, I think that, especially considering that Megan McCarthy is the writer here. I mean, we've been on this track for a while. That just, whenever there's a big event, whenever, especially during the Megan McCarthy era, whenever some episode or something is supposed to be a big event, what matters? Not, um, yeah, nuanced or delicate storytelling. Not, um, carefully thought out ideas. What matters is impact. Twilight becomes an alicorn princess, gets uh, everything she's been working toward. How are we going to play that? Songs. Lots of songs about how the friendship is the best thing ever, and they have the most uh, wonderful friendship that is literally stronger than anything, so Twilight deserves to become Pony Jesus. When an anniversary episode or a character we've been waiting for coming back, memes, references to stuff, you, like, Lots of stuff that we know our audience likes, so just make it all about that. And then what do we get now that we have a big screen movie with a bigger budget than, yeah, a longer runtime? Uh, oh, big bag full of, uh, budget money? Stuff! 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 Celebrities, um, doing stuff! Just, you... Throw it all at the screen. Make an impact. Make an impression. It's all about impact. And I mean, I guess in that sense it's going to succeed. And yeah, Brad Jones sounds like he's going to remember it. And I mean, I admittedly, it probably sticks with people more than if it'd been just kind of a so-so road trip movie. But I mean, ugh. like that Sonic Rainboom in the trailer... Uh, if you saw that, the one that looks like, okay, they're in the middle of this, uh, rip-roaring adventure, this, uh, yeah, castle in the sky-esque journey on a balloon through the clouds, possibly encountering some magical phenomenon, needing to do a sonic rainbow for some reason. It's a terrible moment in the movie. It is a facepalm moment. It becomes, like, it is totally unnecessary, and it turns out to, for very obvious reasons, to have been a really stupid thing to do. Oi. Like, I mean, uh, and I'm, well, okay, I let myself go off there, but I mean, I do think this movie is a disappointment. I do think it kind of blew its shot. Um, I mean, and I'm, I, it's not, I mean, it's not like I think that, okay, there's something wrong with enjoying it, but I mean, I think that, okay, this movie, yeah, it's, Kind of, like, reception and stuff, it's probably reaping what it sowed. And, I mean, it's still probably going to help out the franchise. It sounds like it's doing pretty much what they wanted it to at the box office. Um, I mean, I can't say it gave me nothing. The villain is still uh, pretty cool, even if 
um, like not enough hinges on her story arc to say that there's any kind of, yeah, entire subplot or something that you could say carried the movie or made it worth seeing, not like what Starlight Glimmer and the Crystalling, um, this just, I mean, like I said, probably two-thirds of this movie is t stuff, 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 and I don't I can't imagine ever, yeah, doing a 180 and recommending that, calling that a good movie, um, yeah, I don't know, I mean, uh, you're still probably gonna want to see it just because I, there's gonna be uh, inevitably just a truckload of spoilers floating around the internet, and, uh, I mean, and I'm sure, yeah, I mean, I am glad that I can now talk about it with my fellow bronies, and I mean, nothing else is probably worth your time for that. If you're tight on money, or you, uh, don't, you, you have to pick and choose what movie you're gonna see, and there's, um, something else special that you're maybe hoping for Blade Runner or something like that, uh, yeah, don't choose this movie. I mean, I can't, yeah, pick it being the one, imagine it, well, then again, a lot of bronies, ha well, not a lot, but a, a couple of bronies have seen, have said that, yeah, I, I love that, that was great, so I mean, heck, yeah, maybe just, yeah, sheer impact, maybe you'll love, it. I mean, if that sounds good to you, if, yeah, you know, if just cycling through stuff care really fast, not caring about what the solution is so much as just that there is one and it's upbeat, like, as long as, yeah, the, um, the thought of, yeah, Rainbow Dash rallying characters behind the notion of being awesome just sounds good to you no matter what. Maybe you will like this movie, but I mean, okay, if there's another movie in theaters that, okay, you can, you're really counting on to be great and you can only see one, see that one, don't see this one is what I'd honestly have to say. I mean, I, well, heck, I just, uh, implicitly made it an unfavorable comparison to the first Equestria Girls movie, and maybe not for people who have never seen this stuff before, um, because, I mean, at least this movie has some, uh, fun animation, has, um, a little more life to it, like, uh, first Equestria Girls, I mean, a lot of it hinges more on knowing the franchise, but, yeah, I think, honestly, I'd say the first Equestria Girls accomplished what it set out to do a little better, I mean, I, like, that, Heck, something was accomplished. I was, I cared about what Twilight was feeling in it. I cared about where it was taking her. And I mean, and I, and heck, the solutions in it were actual solutions. When they sing a song in that movie that solves a problem, it's, uh, it's not just like, hey, I bet you, um, you should do this thing that you already wanted to do, but now I'm, uh, just playing up what a good idea it is for you. And, like, completely ignoring the reasons you don't want to, it was, okay, hey, we've, uh, come together and decided that this would be better than what we're currently on, and, you know, we think that you'll think so too, so we're living and, we're living and dying by this, join us or don't, and I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, a rallying cry song, and I mean, that was, okay, that's an actual solution, that, like, um, get, yeah, giving people something that they didn't have before to rally behind, and, I mean, it, it wasn't, it's not a good movie, per se. I, I will never say that about the first Equestria Girls. Heck, even the next two, like, I mean, they're solid but unspectacular direct-to-video movies. I mean, I, they're fine. The first Equestria Girls isn't even that. It's a so-so, often pandering, but still, I'd say, w like, worth it for fans kind of movie. See it, don't see it, you're, you'll probably, you won't be much better or much worse off either way, but it will... Be, it will give you something for your time if you see the first Equestria Girls. This, I mean, I like it doesn't tie into anything from the show. Just apart from being able to talk about it with fellow Bronies, I can't see it being like can't see it, anything about it being a must see experience. So I don't know. I mean, <sighs> okay. So I'm d I was disappointed. Um, I mean, I get you know. People are gonna see it no matter what I say, and a lot of them, including you, are probably going to say, okay, it was, um, I didn't mind it, I thought it was okay, so, fine, I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I do, I hope you enjoy it more than I did, but, um, I mean, I, yeah, can't say this is, 
um, any kind of special moment for the franchise other than it being the first theatrical movie in 30-some years, so... Alright, that's pretty much all I got. I said try to keep this short and sweet. I probably already failed at that, but, um, still better than the recording I did last night. So, um, okay, hope you're having a good week, and I'll uh, talk to you later.